Okay, so we have this pretty well lined up. I've got a few things still to line up like that big sprocket in the middle on the middle axle has got to be moved to the right a little bit. Okay, I wanted to show you guys where, where this project is at. We still got have to um, square up the steel plates which are not square right now so that things are lined up perfectly but right now we're just trying to get things lined up to the point to where I know where the set screw holes are going to be for drilling and tapping set screw holes. Okay, so first axle and some of you are probably asking right about now what the heck are those long things sticking out in the middle of that jack shaft or that axle <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute okay so first axle which we're going to drive from a big wheel like that we're actually going to go with about a four or five foot wheel that's not it that's just a temporary one that we're going to use to test with it's got a big old aluminum sprocket on it Okay, but eventually we're going to go with about a four or five foot diameter wheel for better torque. Okay, but it's going to drive this little sprocket on the left, 34 teeth. We got these four threaded rods sticking out of there. Hmm, what's that all about? We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, and then of course on the same axle we got a 98 tooth sprocket here on the right. Okay. And each of these axles have interesting little things you got to deal with like set screws like that one down in there. Okay, which is not that one but another one in here somewhere that one is tapped and threaded already and sitting down in the hole so that this whole sprocket moves with the bearing see the bearing right here the bearings moving if you can see that in the video or not but that bearing right there is moving right we don't want the we don't want the jack shaft sliding in the bearing the bearing's got to move it's got to carry right it's got to move with it so the one on the left I haven't finished yet, as you can see it's spinning around. So I still got to drill and tap a hole for that, which is on there somewhere. Right here, I just haven't drilled and tapped it yet. Okay. So 34, 98, 98 is going to drive a 10. Little 10 guy right there. Okay, on the same axle we got another 98. Which I'm dealing with some set screw issues here down in here. I got to move this over but this thing is on there firm I gotta pull it out and bang on it a little bit and move it all over and then this 98 is going to drive the third axle another 10 and then as you can see a pulley is going to drive a PMA or a permanent magnet alternator which is going to go on the end there somewhere just haven't mounted it up yet okay like I said eventually we're going to go with probably aluminum box rather than steel plate that I'm using here and we might go with gears if it's affordable. Right now we're going with sprocket and chain because it's more affordable. Okay. Now, what's up with the four spiky thing rod, threaded rods sticking out of this first axle here? What's up with that, huh? Well, one of the issues with putting, what, what we got here is pretty much a, a, a weight driven mechanism, right? That's all it is. Weight's going to drive this whole whole system. Uh, the problem with using gravity is that it accelerates the whole time. So we're always picking up speed. Now there's a speed uh, torque relationship. The faster you go through a gearbox, the less torque you get out on the other end over there. Right? So torque is inverse to speed. Anytime you're going through a gearbox. That's just a fact of life. Torque will be inverse to speed and vice versa. Okay. So uh, nothing new here. It's been around for centuries. A clock escapement mechanism will handle the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the scent of the weight in a very predictable manner, right? That's how they keep perfect time in, in clocks. So this is basically one part of the escapement mechanism. There's going to be an escapement mechanism attached to the bottom of this steel plate down here on both sides. Okay. The mechanism is going to is going to teeter totter back and forth, dit, dit, click 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 click, right? Just like a grandfather clock. These rods are going to. And I already prototyped this on a smaller version, and it works. It's actually going to be turning that way, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. 
So what you're going to get is you're going to get click, doom, click, doom, click, doom, click, doom, click, doom, click, doom, something like that, right? It's going to click and kind of come back a little bit of a backlash. And so anyway, we'll deal with smoothing things out later on with some clutching mechanisms or whatever. Uh, but that's the heart of it right there. An escapement mechanism I don't have um, here. I've got it partially uh, developed and designed. Designed and developed. I just don't have it sitting in the garage yet. So that's what's going on there. Um, this is an alternative energy project. Basically, this is going to be an emergency generator. Maybe later on it can, it can expand to be something a little bit more than that when we refine it and get it moving along. So that's what it is. What is it not? It is not perpetual motion. Please don't comment saying this is perpetual motion. That's not the intent of this project. It is not even over unity. So I don't want to hear any comments or read any comments about how this is not an over unity system because guess what? That's not my intention. My intention simply is to um, use kinetic energy to drive this emergency generator. Okay, that's all it is. Is that useful? Heck yeah, it's useful. Electricity is out. Don't tell me you won't use it. I know I will. So for those of you that are not really, uh, like you don't believe it's possible to use this type of system and it's not worth the time and all those comments I always read on YouTube, go go um, search on Google for uh, um, the Big Ben clock in England. Okay, there's two guys that, uh, twice a week. They go and they... Um, they wind up the big big bin manually by hand. I've seen the video. Two guys go in there and they hand crank that puppy. It takes them about a half an hour or something. And it runs for two or three days. So same concept. Okay, same concept here. We're gonna wind it up and let it let the weight fall and just release its energy. Uh, we don't want to release energy all at once, we want to release it gradually, just like a grandfather clock or just like Big Ben. So that's that's what this part of this right here is going to help us do, okay? As a matter of fact, I have another video, a Lego system that shows this already working. That's part of one of my other videos. So check it out, okay? It's just a little Lego, and this is exactly what it does. And it works good. One of the real challenges with this type of project is binding. When you get into these extreme gear ratios, um, the gears and the sprocket and chain, they like to bind up. Extreme ratios, a lot of issues with binding. So got to get the alignment just right. So uh, I'm not 100% sure it's all going to work, but I'm still going to try. All right, so there it is. So I'll be more than happy to hear other people's comments. Uh, some collaboration would be good. Okay. I'm not really interested in criticisms. Constructive um, input is good. Criticism, I don't really want to hear it. Okay. Like I said before, you can go watch Justin Bieber on YouTube or how the Kardashians broke a fingernail or something. If you want to do that kind of junk, go do it somewhere else. Okay. So here we go, guys. All right. And um, if you have any questions? Be more. I'd be more than happy to hear what you what, what your questions are. If I can answer them, I will. I'm not going to claim I have all the answers to all the problems that may come up, but I'll give it my best. And um, I can tell you where I got the sprockets, who made them. So anybody who wants to try to do this project, uh, I'll be more than happy to point you in the right direction. Okay, guys? All right, later. Enjoy. <laughs>